stretches where he's just a Super Bowl win away from punching his ticket to Canton. Where he'll well, go I think he's already in Canton. But, boy, this would certainly help. Our next... All right, well, uh, our next guest is the Chief Executive Officer of the Charlotte Bats, and we welcome Rick Curdy back to the Sports Exchange. Thanks for being on, Rick. Hey, guys, how are you? I'm doing fine, thanks. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Well, I guess you have a different perspective of what uh, the Super Bowl is compared to all the other people that we think are normal or not normal. So why don't you go ahead, and you call it a bowl game, but not the Super Bowl, right? Yeah, I call it the overrated bowl because that's what it is. It's probably the most overrated championship game in all the sports, in all the baseball, basketball, etc. It's just, it's so overrated, you know, and all people want to see are commercials or the halftime show. And then you got people who don't watch football and they want to see who's in it or who's this person or who's that person. Like my mom, she's all excited to see Jimmy Garoppolo because she thinks he looks like George Clooney. <laughs> well, so, so I guess you know, in, yeah. in your own words you think nobody really cares do you no I don't think anybody cares uh, they just want to see the commercials or see Jennifer Lopez or Shakira at the halftime show and you know you try to explain it to somebody who don't watch it and they're like well I like that team because I like their uniforms or I like their name and it's like oh brother so I call it the overrated bowl because it's so overrated but it makes so much money and all these commercials I think they pay like two million dollars to air a commercial for like 30 seconds and that's all people want to talk about are the commercials and I just think that the game's going to be lame um, and um, I really care less about any of the teams to be quite honest with you no I'd rather you lie to me but that's okay be honest with me anyways <laughs> So, I mean, for whatever it's worth, okay, do you even want to bother to come up with a prediction at all? Yeah, I have the 49ers winning because, to me, defense always beats offense. Mm -hmm. We saw when the Peyton Manning had that fantastic year, what happened to them in the Super Bowl? They were terrible because they went up against a great defense in the Seahawks. And then even with the Panthers in the Super Bowl, they had the number one offense. They went up against the number one defense. We all saw what happened. The Broncos dominated and won the Super Bowl. Uh, 49ers have a great defense. The Chiefs have a sensational offense with Patrick Mahomes, but I always believe that defense always beats offense, so I had the 49ers winning. Okay. Lewis, you have any questions for Rick? No, I kind of agree with you on everything that you said. I mean, I, every year I love watching the Super Bowl because as somebody who me and Scott are in the media and you as well, we I think the two of us would agree that we like seeing narratives play out and to see what it means. You know, the conversation that will ensue after if, say, Patrick Mahomes' his second full year as a starter wins the Super Bowl. We know Russell Wilson did that, so, you know, those comparisons will begin to sprout up. I kind of like to see that. Do I agree with you about the halftime show? Absolutely. I think, you know, if you really want to talk about it, the ins and outs of the Super Bowl, they've gotten it wrong for the past decade with their halftime shows, and I think this year is another example of them doing that. That's going to be a snooze fest. So I'm more concerned with the game than I am anything else. I don't care about Jennifer Lopez performing for all I know, and for all I care, she just makes vapid, overproduced pop music anyway, and that's what the Super Bowl does because they know it sells. And you know what? You can make an argument, and you kind of outlined it yourself, that pro sports and you know, even you and me were talking pre-production. The NBA, one reason you probably don't like it anymore is because it's all about ratings and it's all about just making money. And there's nothing wrong with capitalism in sports. I think it's a perfect realm for it to exist. But it gets in the way of, you know, what had us fall in love with the games in the first place. And I think, you know, from where we've come from Super Bowl One, when you have a guy like Vince Lombardi, you know, just playing to kind of see, you know— you know, exert your superiority over another team to now, like, we're more concerned about what Bud Light commercial is going to be on and how good the right. Doritos commercial is going to be. It, we've deviated from the norm so much that I kind of wish we would just get back to friggin' football. No, but here's the thing. Well, that's where I got to tell you, Lewis, okay. For me, my problem with the NBA is that ratings are making money. That's where you got it all wrong, man. My problem is all the drama. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've said this time and time again. I'll say it again, and Rick will be my first... Uh, um, source of contact because we've been doing this a lot longer together. I have no problem with a, a sport trying to get ratings or making money. After all, that's how you go ahead and pay these astronomical salaries for these overpaid yeah. players, okay, that believe in load management, injury management, whatever the heck you want to call it. 
It's a drama I'm sick and tired of, okay? Rick, you want to rant with me? Okay, I'm sick and tired of all the cotton-picking drama that this league has. That's where my issue is. You know, every sport should have ratings and make money, okay? Nobody's in there, okay, to be in the red. Case in point, then you were born then again when when the league was on tape delay. I know Rick Curdy understands it, right? Magic Johnson and Larry Bird saved this league from going belly up. And then Michael Jordan and Isaiah Thomas came along to compliment the old stars that you had with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and that you had with Julius Irving to rescue this downtrodden league. That's where I've got a problem. Drama, guys, play the cotton-picking game. That's where my issues are. Now, getting back on point to the Super Bowl. First of all, Rick, where are you going to watch the game? Um, Probably not. I haven't watched the <laughs> Super Bowl in the last three years. Oh, the last man. years was so, ter- was so terrible. And well, that was. was. Such a snooze fest. And I hate to say it, I think, that, I think this one's going to be a terrible game, too. I just, I just don't think it's going to be all, all that good. And I agree with all the drama with the NFL and Roger Goodell and his asinine rules about having your socks too high or wearing a headband where you're praising Jesus and they find you for all this stuff. And it, you're right about the NFL. It's so much drama. And the Super Bowl is even more drama with all the halftime and, and all the smoke and all the mirrors. And it's just going to be a garbage game, in my opinion. Well, the NFL is drama, but I like to pick on the NBA having a lot of drama, too, man. I mean, a lot of these sports like that are, you know, I got to say this, though, before you interject. One of my favorite things, and I don't like end zone celebrations, but I got to give Terrell (laughs) Owens his due is when he pulled out the Sharpie in his pocket and Joe Horn went ahead and pulled out the uh, uh, flip phone. So those are okay. If they're creative, uh, if they're creative, that's one thing. I had the opportunity, uh, uh, it was two days ago, to have a photo taken with Barry Sanders of the Detroit Lions. When I was when I went ahead, you I know you saw, both saw it on my Facebook page, but Barry's the most even keeled pers- uh, legend that I've ever seen. Where he handed the ball to the official and went back and scored another one, and that's what you want to see. Unfortunately, with all the drama surrounding a lot of sports, I, I got to admit though, the, uh, the two sports I don't see as much drama are hockey and baseball. I don't. I mean, I don't care about the scandals. That's another story. No, yeah. But I'm talking yeah. about drama. I, baseball and hockey have a lot less of it compared to the NFL and the NBA. And you know what? That, to my drama, is a big, huge turnoff. Now, having covered four of these Super Bowls myself, I enjoy going to the Super Bowl. I don't mind watching it. I'll be watching it at a friend's house that day. Although Candy and I have another event come Saturday uh, called, I think it was Taste of the NFL in Hollywood, Florida, which I'm really looking forward to seeing and meeting a lot of people. For me, when I've covered Super Bowls, it's really all been about more networking than anything else because you never know how you can progress and grow the brand and make some new friends. But, you know, I've seen some pretty good inspiring halftime shows. The first one I ever saw, you know, I, I've had uh, the national anthems, I think, are neat, too. And I had Cher one year, and I could go on and on and on. So I think one of the things I do like about the Super Bowl are some of the national anthem singers for sure. Because they certainly go out of their way to try to go ahead and bring on some good artists. Yeah, I mean, I again, I'm just uh, one thing. If you were if we're talking about things about the Super Bowl that irk us, because Rick kind of set us up for that. I'm sick and tired, and this is you know this is on the networks, and they're just trying to like show you know the one percent, the very rich people. I'm so sick and tired of you know cameras zooming into celebrities who are. They're watching the game. I don't care that they paid ten thousand dollars to watch the game. I'm there to watch. I'm not there to see Alex Rodriguez sitting in the booth watching his fiance. Right, I'm with you there, man. I don't care about that. Yeah, I want to. I want to watch the two best teams in their respective leagues go off, go against each other. And you're going to see that. But there's just going to be so much crap in between that it's just like, am I watching a football game or am I watching an ad for you know like Budweiser? It's <laughs> It's infuriating. Well, hey, now don't insult the Clydesdales. They're pretty good. I'm not making. I'm not getting on them. I'm just saying. I know. I'm just saying. Don't yeah. insult the Clydesdales. They're the, uh, you know who know many who knows how many whoppers that these guys courses eat. 
Hey, I'm not, and I will admit, I am one who watches Super Bowl commercial compilations. But again, I don't go for the commercials. I, know, I'm just, I go. I'm just kidding with you, we're, man. We're sports, you know. We're we're you know sports fans first, and we're media people as well. Although you know, once you get into this industry, the fan title kind of gets stripped from you the way you know an NCAA title would from a team who cheats. But at the same time, again, can we just please just get back to what we're here to watch. We're not here to watch, I don't know, Steven Tyler sitting in a suite before Aerosmith plays a halftime show. We're here to watch the best teams play each other, and that's really all I want to see. I don't care about the commercials as much as I do just watching the friggin' sport. The sport is why we're here in the first place. Tell me how you really feel, Lewis. There you go. I laid it out for you. <laughs> yeah, tell me how you really feel. Laid it out for you. I don't all really right, well, think there's here, much you know more what? I can say. Yeah, I know. I'm sure you do. That's what... Uh... I mean, you know, listen, you know, I don't know what the Clydesdales really eat, but if they want to go ahead and eat a bunch of Whoppers by Burger King, you get become a Clydesdale a whole lot faster. Yeah, you know what it is. I mean, yeah, but, you know, I, I, I got to tell you one thing, though, from a media perspective, which I did enjoy about the longer halftime shows. Again, it's a difference if you're watching it at home and you're working the game. Uh, you know, when you're at the game and you're talking to your colleagues, I enjoyed the longer halftime shows so I can catch my breath and try to get insights on the game. So it's a different animal. You guys will never know that. But, you know, from my standpoint, it's a totally different animal. It really, really is. So, mm-hmm. But, you know, I can appreciate that. You know, and, you know, again, the commercials, they pay a boatload of money for them, without a doubt. And you're right, a lot of them are stink. They are corny. But that's exactly how you charge them mega dollars for a lot of these things. It's the most creative day on the planet when it comes to watching them. So whether I'm <laughs> over yeah. is, around a bunch of people or not, you know, to me, I really don't frankly care. If there's anything good about smartphones nowadays, people can get distracted, go on to smartphones, and look at other stuff instead of always paying attention to commercials. So any other perspectives there, Rick, about uh, what you really think of the game? Oh, I'm just tired of these bandwagon fans that come out of nowhere. I've seen so many people wearing these Kansas City Chiefs hats and 49ers hats, and I've known people for like 10 years, and they're, now all of a sudden they're a Chiefs fan, and they'll say, well, my mom's from Kansas City, or um, I, I've been to Kansas City, and it's just all these bandwagon fans that come out of nowhere, and, and it's like, really? And they don't even know who Marty Schoenheimer is. They don't know who Christian McCoy is. They don't know who Priest Holmes is. I'm like, I'm a bigger Kansas City Chiefs fan than you are. And I don't even like the Kansas City Chiefs. So <laughs> I get tired of seeing all that. And like I said, all the bells and whistles and, and A-Rod and Jennifer Lopez, who I cannot stand. I don't know how their big, massive egos can fit in that stadium when they're together. Oh. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. But the halftime show is going to stink. It's going to have Shakira as well. I could care less about her. So, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm not very excited about the Super Bowl. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, that's okay. And if the game falls into play like you had last year at 10-3, to 3, then all of a sudden what you just said makes you look a whole lot better, doesn't it? Although I have a feeling this one's going to have a lot more offense than last year's 10-3 to 3, uh, uh, single-digit win by – the New England Patriots over the Los Angeles Rams. So, yeah, that was terrible. Yeah, that wasn't one of the better acts, that's for sure. No, I mean, if you really want to contextualize that, that's like a Super Bowl that Terry Bradshaw won in the 70s when he's throwing the ball 14 times and it's like a 14-7 to game. Like, those low-scoring games are great to an extent, but, that you know, at the end of the day, we, it's, we had – pretty Jekyll and Hyde Super Bowls we saw that game with the Eagles the year before was like 53 to 48 and then you have 13 to 6 it's like I'm watching a baseball game one year and then I'm watching a college basketball game the next it's like what am I getting well I guess the one thing that you mentioned that and Rick we got a few more minutes to go so I'd like to get your opinion on this as well okay Okay. and I talked about this with Bill Winters before and now I'm going to bring it to you guys attention you know you have a two-week layoff versus a one-week layoff do you think that the two-week layoff makes it a more competitive game, or do you think you're better off with a one-week layoff? I think one week because they're, uh, they're going to be rusty. Usually that's what you see in the Super Bowl. Right, you see, right. Like you'll see the first couple of plays where they're overthrowing the ball or they're fumbling it right. or they miss the tackle, and it's like, man, they were, they're rusty, especially when you have that momentum where you play every Saturday or the playoffs, you play on a Saturday or Sunday and you have that momentum going and all of a sudden it stops and then you go out there in two weeks and you're in the biggest 
championship where millions and millions of people are watching you and you're just rusty and some might get stage fright and uh, so I so I, I, I like a one week because two weeks it just it, it's not good it's just they look very rusty yeah and, and you know some of the scores through history would probably indicate what you're saying is definitely true Lewis 